Hey everyone, today we're going to learn how to create an Involute Spur Gear with Fusion 360. But before we get started, it's important for us to understand what an Involute Curve is, as well as some other important characteristics and features of Spur Gears. An Involute of a Curve is the locus of a point on a piece of taut string as the string is unwrapped from the curve. Think of it as the path your hand takes as you unwind a piece of string or tape. If we apply the involute curve or path to gear teeth, we end up with gear teeth that maintain smooth, efficient power transmission during the rolling action. They're also easy to manufacture and therefore cost less to produce. So now let's go ahead and look at some common characteristics and features of spur gears. So the first thing we want to look at is what's known as the base circle. And the base circle is the circle in which the involute curve is generated. Think of it as the location on the circle where your involute curve or path starts. The next thing we want to look at is the pitch circle, which is the circle where two mating gears come in contact with one another. And then there's the line of centers, the line connecting the pitch circle centers of two mating gears. And next we have what's known as the pitch point, which is the point of contact or tangency between two mating gears. And then there's the line of action, which is the line passing through the pitch point that is also tangent to the base circles. And finally, we have what's known as the pressure angle. It's the angle between the line of action and a line tangent to the pitch circles at the pitch point. So the first thing we want to consider when creating an involute spur gear in Fusion 360 is the pressure angle. Okay, right over here. So increasing the pressure angle will improve power transmission, but at the same time will increase gear wear and meshing noise. However, decreasing the pressure angle will result in reduced power transmission capacity, but will improve gear meshing properties like reduced noise and gear wear. Ideally, a pressure angle of 20 degrees is preferred because it is a compromise between other common pressure angles, such as 14.5 and 25 degrees. So for this example, we're going to use a pressure angle of 20 degrees here. So the next thing we want to look at is what's known as the diametrical pitch. Okay, and the diametrical pitch is the total number of teeth per inch. And in this case, we're going to specify a diametrical pitch of two teeth per inch. The next thing we want to consider is gear teeth or number of teeth. And for this example, we want our gear to have 20 teeth. Next, we want to look at what's called backlash. And backlash is the play or gap distance between mating gear teeth. And in this case, we're going to set our backlash value to zero. Moving on, the next thing we want to look at is what's called root fillet radius. Okay, and the root fillet radius is just the small fillet curve at the base of our tooth here. And in this case, we're going to use a root fillet radius of about 1 16th of an inch or 0 0.06 inches. Next, we're going to look at what's called gear thickness, and that's essentially just the depth or thickness of our gear. And in this case, we're using a gear thickness of one inch. Now we need to consider the hole diameter, okay, which specifies the hole diameter at the center of the gear, and in this case, one inch. And obviously, when you're working with gears, you need to make sure that your hole diameter has a clearance fit between your gear and the gear axle here. Okay, and finally we're going to look at what's called pitch diameter. Okay, and if you recall, the pitch circle is where two mating gears come in contact with one another. Okay, but pitch diameter, well, it's just the diameter of the pitch circle, and in our case, 10 inches. So the pitch diameter is found by dividing the total number of teeth by the diametrical pitch. And in this case, 20 divided by 2, we get, okay, a pitch diameter of 10. So now that we've learned some of the common features and characteristics of spur gears, let's go ahead and start creating one of our own with Fusion 360. All right, so the first thing we want to do now is to come on up to File, start a new design. Okay, and we need to come to our Tools tab and over here to Add-ins and down to Scripts and Add-ins. So go ahead and select that and then scroll down and select your spur gear script and select Run. All right, so now let's go ahead and start entering our settings here for our spur gear generator. So uh, we're going to use a pressure angle here of 20. Our number of teeth is going to be 20. OK, 
okay, and our backlash is going to be zero. Our root fillet radius is going to be 0 0.06, okay, and our gear thickness is going to be one, and our hole diameter is going to also be one, and then, which will give us a pitch diameter of 10. Let's go ahead and select OK. Okay, and there you have it, okay, your spur gear, and you notice that this construction circle here, or construction line, is our uh, pitch circle, all right, with a diameter of 10 inches. All right, so don't forget to go ahead and save that guy. We'll call it large gear. So now let's go ahead and repeat this process and create a smaller gear. So come on up here to file and go to new design. We are going to come on over to tools once again and come on over here to add-ins and come down to scripts and add-ins and once again scroll down and find your uh, spur gear script and hit run. All right, so once again, we're going to use a pressure angle of 20. Now, in order for our gears to mesh, it's very important that we use the same diametrical pitch, okay? But this time, we're going to use 10 teeth, okay? And once again, we're going to use a backlash of 0, a root fillet radius of 0 0.06, okay? And the same gear thickness, 1 inch, and a hole diameter of also 1 inch. And we're going to go ahead and select OK. Now let's go ahead and save it. Come up to file. We'll call it small gear. And save. Now we need to design an object to mount our gears on with two axles. So let's come on up to file and start a new design. All right, and let's create a sketch here on the XY plane. Come over here to create and we're gonna come down to rectangle and we're gonna do a center rectangle. Okay, and we are going to drag out a center rectangle with the dimensions of, or it's highlighted blue there, I'm gonna type in 12. I'm gonna hit the tab button and we're gonna make the other dimension of our rectangle 20 inches and hit enter. I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish my sketch and I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this guy out a distance of one inch. Enter. Now let's go ahead and start a sketch on the surface of this guy and we're going to create our first axle for our first gear here and I want it to be on the x-axis so I'm going to come here to the origin and drag out my cursor and I'm going to make my axle diameter with a dimension of 0.99 inches. I'm going to hit enter and now let's go ahead and dimension this guy. So from this edge we want it to be roughly five inches and then from this edge we want it to be six inches okay now I'm gonna grab my circle tool again and then somewhere in this area I'm just gonna kinda once again make sure it's on the x-axis here and I'm gonna drag it out once again with a diameter of 0.99 inches now let's come on up and dimension this circle so that it's vertically aligned with our other circle and of course we want that to be six inches as well Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. In order for our gears to mesh properly, now we need to determine the line of center distance, which is the distance between two mating gears. Or in this case, okay, we need to find the correct distance between the centers of these two circles, which represent the centers of our two mating gears. So the line of center distance can be calculated using the following formula below, where the line of center distance between two mating gears equals the pitch circle diameter of gear one plus the pitch circle diameter of gear two all divided by two, which essentially gives us the radius of the pitch circle. And if you recall, the pitch circle is the circle where mating gears come in contact with one another. So we need the distance between the two gears that we made previously. So let's come to our large gear. All right, and you may have noticed that when we generated our, our large gear here, when we created it, it had this construction line. Well, this construction line represents the pitch circle. So we need to get this diameter. So let's come on up to measure, okay? And we have a diameter of our pitch circle of 10 inches. All right, so take note of that value. Now let's do the same thing for our small gear, okay? Same thing, when we created our small gear, it created the pitch circle for us with this construction line. So let's go and inspect it. Okay, and if you notice, we have a diameter here of five inches. All right, and so now that we have the diameters of both of our pitch circles, we can calculate the distance, the center line distance between our two mating gears. So let's come on back over to our 
mounting part here. And if we substitute our values, 10 inches and 5 inches, into our equation and divide that by 2, we get a center line distance of 7.5 inches. So now I can come up to my sketch dimension tool here and I can dimension these two so that I get a distance of 7.5. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. I'm going to finish my sketch and I'm going to go ahead and extrude these two circles out now a distance of 1.5 inches. Okay, and these represent the axles for our gears. Remember, so I'm going to go ahead and select OK. All right, so when we're done, let's go ahead and save it. I'm just going to call this the gear mount, okay, which we're going to mount our gears on with these axles. I'm going to go ahead and select Save. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and start assembling our gears here. So what I want to go ahead and do now is to go ahead and do a new design and we're going to save it immediately and we're going to call it uh, spur gear assembly and we'll go ahead and select save and then I'm going to open my data panel I'm going to right click on my gear mount here that we just made and we're going to insert it in the current design go ahead and select OK I'm going to right click on my large gear and go ahead and insert that guy into there and I'm going to place it in the appropriate location. Something like that. Select OK. Let's do the same for the small gear. And select OK. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and on my gear mount I'm going to right click on this guy and I'm going to ground it so it doesn't move. Now let's go ahead and assemble our two mating gears here and we're going to use what's known as a revolute constraint. So we're going to come up to assemble, go to joint and make sure you select revolute. Okay. And we're going to basically zoom in. We want the center of that to line up with the center of our axle. Okay. And I'm going to offset it here. A small distance of just minus 0.5. Okay. Hit OK. And now we're going to do the same thing for our large gear. And by default, your Revolute option shows up. So I'm going to come over here, select that center to that center. Okay. And once again, I'm just going to offset it 0.5. and select OK. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and close my data panel here and now we want our gear teeth to appear like they mesh properly and to do that, okay, I'm going to come on over here to large gear I'm going to right click move or copy I'm going to get a good front view of my object here okay, and then I'm going to select this rotate bottom option and then I'm going to come to the axis and I'm going to just select my axle here and I'm going to rotate it Oh, I'm going to kind of eyeball it and it looks like about 9 degrees should do the trick so minus 9 and select OK and the last thing we want to do now is apply a motion link to our gears so they appear to spin properly so come on up now to assemble let's go to motion link let's capture the position and it's going to ask us to select our joints so I'm going to select that guy and that guy okay and if you know about gears, we want the other one to spin in the opposite direction. So we're going to type in minus 360 here. Okay, and our gear ratio is 2 to 1, 20 teeth to 10 teeth. So we need our angles here to reflect that ratio. So 2 to 1, or 360 to 180 here. So I'm going to type in minus 180. Okay, looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And the last thing I'm going to show you is to how to get rid of these pitch circles here if you don't want to see them. So come back to your large gear here. Okay, take off visibility, hit save. Do the same for your small gear. Take off visibility. Hit save. Okay. Okay, come back to your spur gear assembly. Click on this yellow exclamation point here. Okay, hit refresh and there you go. We can also do the same for our joints if you don't want to see them. So click on joints and take off the visibility there as well as the motion link if you want. 
Okay, and now when you go to rotate your gear, they should spin and rotate properly. Okay, when you're done, of course, don't forget to save it. And that'll do it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching.